No, mm -hmm. my hi to my welcome to a vlog from the Tones Toiwi Caucus, where we're going to be updating about the e-learning um, that we're currently developing for the crisis support worker role. Today, I'm joined by um, the fabulous Helen Baxter, who works at Mohawk Media, and I'll hand it over to her to introduce herself. Kia ora everyone. Yes, I'm Helen Baxter. I'm Creative Director at Mobile Media. Uh, we produce animation, infographics and e-learning content. So came on board to help Miriam create some animated content and along the way started to get involved with exploring the opportunity for doing an online e-learning platform to make it more efficient and easy for people across the whole sector to access great quality training. And so in today's vlog, we're going to take you a little bit along the journey of what we've been doing so far and um, chipping in and also sharing some of the tools that we've learned that have worked really well for us and making sure that everyone else knows them and is able to reutilize them if you're ever doing a project of this scale, because it is actually quite a substantial project. And so that's part of the idea of today's vlog. So shall we start off with sharing um, sharing our e-learning Helen. Absolutely, so if you want to share everybody the learning management system that we've got so far. Um, so yeah, the idea was, as I mentioned, to create something that was uh, an online space where it was easy to access on any device, um, on uh, whatever internet connection that you might have. So we started with uh, looking around for a platform that was easy, accessible for people to use on any device, but also was relatively easy for people to, uh, within the sector, to be able to publish their own content because the long-term goal as well is not only to be delivering great quality uh, training content, but also to create an, a community of practice and knowledge sharing. So uh, the, the, the criteria was cost-effective, easy to use, accessible, and simple enough for Tornest themselves to be able to learn how to run and grow it as an online space. Um, so we ended up using a tool called LearnDash, which is a learning hub based on a WordPress content management system. So currently within this website, we have a pilot going through, which is pilot one. And as you can see, if we go into here, courses, it has um, two of the courses that we developed so far. So this was the first one that was available when I was doing the roadshow that people looked at and was the document that we shared at, with all the high level learning objectives and information about what what learners will be receiving in terms of knowledge and skills. So from this, um, we have now developed a new, uh, a new training. So sorry, this is a, just a little bit of what it actually looked like. So we started off with a very rough, um, a rough way of doing it in some ways, where it was just me talking over PowerPoints and just getting information out there uh, so that we could have a first iteration of a better, like an alpha pilot, which was done before the roadshow started. And then this is now where we've got to, which is slightly more extended pro program, which from four lessons, we've got up to six, just for the sheer amount of, of content that was in the program, um, we needed to actually expand the lessons. And the look and the feel of the lessons are also starting to look really different. So instead of having me just talking over PowerPoints, um, the, this is the, the only video where I will actually be a person. And then um, after that, I become an avatar. So, and we'll be going into a little bit of the details of why we've done that and what's the purpose of that. So at the moment we have um, pilot one going through and really the purpose of that is to ensure that we've actually honored and respected the information, knowledge and wisdom of those who did the good practice guidelines. So those are the that have been the people that have been allowed the first entry into this course to ensure that we are saying um, what it is that they intended we say from the good practice guidelines. So we're currently in uh, the second stage of the pilot. So you could in, in effect call it the beta release now. Yes. Uh, because the first process, all of the content initially went into a single document, which ended up um, about 300 pages long. Um, and I'm sure anyone who's worked in content creation, especially at the scale, finds that it's really easy to get bogged down and lost in just the sheer volume. So we've got a saying at Mohawk Media that when things get complicated, mind map them. 
so we did. First thing I did is put together a first iteration of the first course, mapped out all of the different lessons and topics and associated videos for each. And it was a really great way of getting an overview of the big picture of, of just the scope, the sheer scale of content that we were dealing with. And also allowing Miriam and her team of alpha reviewers to really look at the logic, the structure, the information architecture, the instructional design, the, the, the flow that uh, users and, and students are going to be going through this, these materials. And as mentioned, uh, originally it, it was four lessons. It became pretty obvious that to create space for everything, it needed to be six. And also putting some parameters and some constraints in. So, for example, breaking the content down so there was no more than two to three topics a lesson. So that as people are on their learning journey, each stage isn't overwhelming. And it's just much easier to allow people to connect with the content and learn in their own space at their own time in small, easy to digest elements. And so the process we went through from this mind map to refining then the content within this master document is we had a team of contractors um, for a short amount of time actually doing quite, um, quite robust sprints of looking at the content and handing it over to different parts of the team who had different expertise. So just a big shout out to uh, Natasha Micheletti or Tash Micheletti, Amanda Maynell, um, Jim Margaret and Bronwyn Kerr, as well as um, our Tuiwi Caucus Manager, Mary Beresford Jones. And so, uh, and also Catherine McPhillip, sorry, I should not forget it, Catherine. And so each, each of us really had a quite a defined role of what part of the content were we actually reviewing. So for me, it was, um, I was often doing what I call the rough uh, diamond minor, where I was just taking things from the very first course that we did and making sure that they were in the document. And then it went through to Amanda, who was more the uh, looking at the overview of the learning objectives and ensuring actually the content that we had reflected our learning objectives. Then Tash had more of a clinical perspective, making sure that actually what we were saying reflected the practice of our what we do actually currently. And then uh, Catherine was the final um, piece of the puzzle that actually looked at all and had a, as with that expertise and knowledge from what happened in the good practice guidelines. So it was quite a, a beautiful process actually in handing over the document to each part. And then on while we were doing that, Mary and a small team uh, was working specifically on one of the lessons that we knew that needed more resources, more time and um, and care a little bit around what we were saying. So we had this kind of two teams working at the same time. And now all of the contractors have finished, so it's come back to national office to finalize this program. And it was actually very useful for part of that process to use Google Docs to allow you to have version control, mm -hmm. tracking revisions, and also having open conversations around the content and making collaborative decisions. Yes, absolutely. So we, we also had like a, a few systems in place where people would put comments in the Google Docs and if it was just a note to self, they would actually say note to Miriam. Um, whereas if it was I need an open discussion about that, then they would leave the name out so that we could very quickly skim through and go what's just someone's notes that they're making on the side to improve it when they need to get back to it or and what's the part that needs to be collaborative and we need to be working all together. And it's really important that robust process of documentation, it's going to allow continual iteration of, of the content because this is the key thing. The more iterations, the more polish and the more reviews that it goes through, then we end up with, you know, the best thing we can at the end. And actually within the, within the course itself, we put the Google documents up for the pilot so that they can actually make comments and notes directly in the Google document or they can leave it below um, below each section. So sometimes there might be something more specific in the language or the, uh, the script of the lesson that they're wanting to edit, and then they can go straight to that piece of the script and leave a comment there. Or they can just leave a comment if it's a generic comic, uh, comment about the lesson, and then it can be also in both 
the idea is that in both sections it can stay collaborative and communicative, that those who are in the past can actually, actually talk to each other and have a discussion about whether they think or not that comment is valid or um, not so much valid, sorry, that, that it is actually something that's needed for a change for this uh, course to, to continue to develop. So once we set up the information architecture, the structure of the second course with the six lessons, then it was uh, the, the, the big production part of turning as much of the content as possible into video-based content. Now, Miriam spent a long time in the first draft of, as we said, talking into PowerPoints and getting all of the, you know, just the, the content in place and, and, and the individual learning elements, which is key. Um, but it was pretty apparent that we needed a more efficient way long term to deliver the content. Uh, and as mentioned, we are uh, Mohawk Media, uh, my company is an animation production company, and we have a toolkit for doing avatar based presentations. So the decision was that as this content was going to be iterated with lots of feedback and polishing, that there would be a, a various stages where we would be able to add on extra elements. So stage one being recording the scripts. So defining all the scripts, honing them, getting them reviewed by everybody, getting the audio recorded, putting together simple visual storyboards of what extra content might need to be added. Um, and at this stage, what we have is basically a static avatar, but the end and uh, final uh, result is going to be, as Maria mentioned, that she will be an animated presenter-based character who will be uh, showing all of the video-based content. And the reason behind that is that uh, that actually allows us to do any future remixing, because as the content is, is released into the world and it starts to be used in the sector, it's inevitable that there will be um, iteratives, it, it, you know, other iterations necessary. It's a lot easier with the process that we've developed to create additional content or remixable elements and drop that into the overall course if we use the cartoon-based avatar presenter rather than having to get someone on camera. So it's a, it's a strategic decision that this is how we're going to approach the workflow. And hopefully at the very end as well, it means it'll be a more engaging way of viewing the content. So we'll just give you a little sneak peek of the so the, in the introduction is where we've actually animated the avatar just to give people a sense and feel um, of what the animation, animated avatar will look like in the end, end product. Um, and then from lesson one onwards, it's only static. Uh, there's just a picture of the avatar and me talking over it. So we'll just give you a very sneak peek. Language impacts the way we think, feel and understand concepts in our world. The choice of language we use can also impact those we are supporting. So we are starting this course by paying attention to the words that we will be using. Throughout this course, we'll be using key terms that describe sexual violence and identify people. We will be explaining what we mean by these words and encourage you to discuss them with your supervisor and colleagues and understand what these words mean to you and how they influence your work. So that's just a very quick sample um, of what is to come. <laughs> So we're, where we're at now is basically um, looking strategically through the workflow to uh, make sure that the decisions we're making now and the process with, processes that we're putting in place right now are going to save time and effort in the future. Uh, very much thinking about this whole e-learning video and resource series as creating remixable building blocks that will be easy to edit and update at any stage or potentially remix to target uh, different cultural groups, or we don't know yet what is going to be required. So it's a partly, it's, it, it, it's a, as we keep saying, it's an iterative approach. Some of it is being proactive and planning and being strategic. Some of it is being reactive to respond to the feedback that we're getting. Um, so we very much appreciate everybody who's been involved so far to sharing their feedback. Um, and really the time that we're spending now is going to save a lot of time in the future and allow uh, time and space for um, as many people as possible to engage and input and collaborate with the whole creation process. And the other element to that, eh, Helen, is also that really for the sexual violence they have to be able to take charge on their own content and that's um, for me the 
you know, the huge gratitude I have um, towards Mohawk Media and how much they've invested um, and also supporting me and training me um, to be able to actually do lots of this ourselves so that we we can create our own media and we can actually get things out into the open because we do have a lot to share and a lot to share not just with our, within our sector but to other sectors. And so that's really the hope and dream, um, I think, of this project is that we can start supporting each other and getting that message out there to ultimately end sexual violence and ensure that we have really great outcomes for all survivors and those who have, you know, also have harmful sexual behaviour out there so that we can really start shifting the cultural norms and, and societal values that are surround us. So, you know, it is a big project and, and I'm hoping that this becomes our like safe haven to continuously challenge ourselves and develop our practice. So that's, um, that's part what we're doing. So from here where we're off to is, um, so with Pilot One, we're leaving Pilot One very much um, to themselves to kind of work their way through it. Um, that is a little strategic because we're trying to also evaluate um, how much, how many reminders do we need to get through a course and, and what kind of support do people need. So if you felt a little bit abandoned, Pilot One, um, it's not fully intentional, but it is a little bit intentional. Um, and so soon we'll also have pilot two getting ready to go in. Um, that should still be around early to mid October, according to how much I managed to get through um, in September. So we'll, we'll just work around those dates. And the idea is that then that will actually have a little bit more structure and hopefully I'll, and we'll be giving you more reminders and more um, kind of support getting through. Both pilot one and pilot two, we're still looking at content. There's going to be no quizzes, no interactivity, because there's no point designing those until we have the content um, very solid. And then pilot three will be probably where we start exploring and experimenting a little bit with interactivity um, of quizzes and activities that can be done online. So that's where we're at. If you do have any questions, as always, give me a call, send me an email, um, get hold of me in any online or offline spaces that you can and really happy to discuss this with anyone so yeah that's all from us and I think you'd like to add Helen no just to say it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you on this uh, to this point and I'm really looking forward to getting it through to the end and you know just seeing how people get to use it in, uh, out there so um, yeah thank, thanks to everyone for all of their contributions so far awesome thank you everyone mm -hmm.